welcome back to the International Classroom Podcast. As we're wrapping up season two, we're going to hit rewind to revisit 10 of the most impactful, insightful and thought provoking discussions that we've had throughout this season. So join us as we dive back into these episodes and relive some of the magic from the past season. Yeah, it's. It, I love that the, the way you put that, that that space in the middle, um, because it's true. I mean, I I've been thinking about this recently, and and obviously the idea of curriculum planning that then goes down to units and then into to lesson plans, and thinking about you know what is the I don't think the perfect lesson plan, but what is the ideal lesson plan for the context of my students and the subjects I'm teaching, um, but in between that now I think they were seeing a real movement away from just learning outcomes or, you know, lesson outcomes, objectives, which, you know, there's always that discussion about outcomes and objectives for another time, but a movement away from that and the parts that fit in between that maybe they are the, the, the immeasurable parts like skills. So the things that you're picking up there, that space in between where, you know, teachers can come together and go, what are the skills we want students to get from, you know, this unit of work? And and that's one of the reasons why I always loved the MYP so much, because it allowed that to happen. Whereas GCSE and IGCSE, I'm guilty of just following the book because that's what the time dictates. Just follow the book through, you know, most of it transitions relatively nicely from one part to another because I don't get given the time or departmental time to, to really come together in secondary and go, right, you know, these are the things that we want to do. But I want to hark back to, you know, when we're talking about skills, because I know it's one thing that you're also interested in now is about sort of, you know, independent student learning and this idea of student skills. You know, what do you think are going to be sort of maybe three, five of the top skills that students should be developing right now? Well, that's a great question. And um, for me, I, I'm a big fan, and I think you may be as well, education research, particularly based around sort of educational futures. Uh, and, you know, I've already said, and I believe strongly, we don't have that crystal ball. Uh, mm-hmm. But we do have a lot of people who work in research bodies and think tanks um, watching this space very, very carefully and then trying to make a call with the data that they've got about how we can empower you know, students. Um, one of the, the key thinkers who who I, I still love this guy, he's in his mid-80s now, I think, Michael Fullen, um, writes a lot and speaks a lot, you know, about um, what are these kind of deep pedagogies um, that we need for success. And he talks about system drivers, but um, he's actually one of the founding fathers of the 60s, which I mentioned earlier, you know, this whole idea of like, you know, character-based critical thinking, communication, collaborative skills, citizenship. I think I missed one. (laughs) But uh, this whole idea of um, these forms of literacies, and you used the word skills, Alex, I thought that was a really good choice. These literacies um, are essentially competencies that students will have to help them navigate. Um, And he reels off, you know, these ones and these deep pedagogies. And um, if I can go into cheap cheat mode a little bit, could I just open up something on my screen and just yeah, yeah. kind of reel it off to you? I don't want to pretend I'm not, you know, like some sort of kid trying to, you know, cheat in a test or something. But, oh, it's fine. This um, is like the Joe, Ro- like a Joe Rogan podcast when he's just putting stuff up on the screen and people ab- are researching. Absolutely it's fine. You're right. Why not? You know, why not? Let's leave to technology. So, um, you know, Michael Fullen, when he's talking about uh, deep learning, I shouldn't forget, he does this project with uh, Joanne Quinn and this is sponsored by Microsoft. But um, he has this kind of like framework that he's been working on that um, is really the way that education needs to go to prepare students successfully for their futures. And one of the areas that he, he talks about, and we all, you know, we go on and bang on about this stuff all the time, but education really should be far more student led than it has been in the traditional paradigm and the traditional model in the sense that there's a lot more agency and choice and individual engagement of the student because ultimately they've got to fly the nest and they've got to become independent. And that's what universities will expect as well, almost from day one. From the the moment the student walks across the threshold of the university, they're pretty much expecting the kids to be ready to go and independent and organized and set up 
uh, in control of their learning, uh, curious, you know, all of these kind of like traits and sort of mindsets um, they expect them to have. So, you know, that's one thing that um, he is saying. There needs to be a paradigm shift from the teacher-driven sort of module. module and I'm, I'm, by this, I'm not being critical of teachers because, you know, I still identify as a teacher. Um, you know, I worked in the classroom for 15 years before I became a head, and, um, and I miss it. So whenever I go into schools and talk to students, I say I'm a teacher in disguise, you know, when I'm going as part of CIS. But I think number one is um, we have to recognise um, when you've got safety of books and, you know, textbooks, like you were just saying, Alex, um, you can lean on them heavily as a teacher and you can get into more sort of content-driven mode. And in some ways, that's safe. I think that's a safe way. If you've got a lot of pressure, um, you want to guarantee the success of the students. We'll say, well, you know, that's a safe thing. You follow this. You prepare in this way. You should be successful in your exams, your high stakes exams, IGCSE or A level or IB diploma. Um, that's just one thing. I think the second thing is um, at the end of the day, these kids are going to be plugged into real world contexts. And Michael Fullen says, at the end of the day, we've got to get students immersed in real world learning, problem solving, and authentic learning as soon as we can. And I think. Uh, some pro very progressive schools that I've been in and worked with, uh, including some Regio schools in Thailand, problem-based learning uh, schools in Kazakhstan, are really trying to do that almost from the get-go. And, um, you know, there's really exciting spaces when you go in there and you see the kids with their manipulatives and or they're, they're working in projects and um, they're kind of rolling their sleeves up, you know, right from the get-go. I think the third thing he talks about are um, the way we view relationships um, in schools and in communities. And I think the idea is with Michael Fullen's work um, that we can harvest learning from um, learning within communities and in forming these sorts of like partnerships. Um, so that's, that's something obviously children are going to need for life anyway, unless they want to live in some sort of silo or in a box somewhere. So um, the fourth one he talks about, uh, which is obviously MYP, which you referenced, um, inquiry-based learning to build knowledge, it, which is, you know, harks back to the whole Piaget sort of constructivism sort of sense of things. So building on what you already know, but, you know, using your curiosity to discover and learn new things and then piece that together. Uh, in some sort of format that, you know, or schemas that will make sense to you and then you can apply to other things in life. Um, I, I mean, there are other things as well, but these are really sort of powerful things that uh, Michael Fullen is talking about. He also goes deeply into technology, uh, which he calls a connector and amplifier. Uh, he'd be pleased to know. And um, going beyond seeing technology as um, transmission and consumption tool. So there's a, there's a there's, there's lots to unpack. You know, that's just Michael Fullen's work on, on sort of deep learning, um, which I think is, you know, pretty fundamental to reimagining um, the education system. I really enjoyed the whole conversation I got to have with Leo about this. Just insightful, experienced, knowledgeable from education from a world's perspective. But the reason why I picked out this clip was because of the reference to someone called Michael Fullen. He mentioned it in there. And this idea of skills. Now, I think for most of us, having worked in work in any school, um, at some point you would have come across six C's or four C's or something like that. And I know I have. But what I found really interesting about this was when we looked at it together and we talked about it was two ones that I'd never come across before interwoven into this, which was to do with character and citizenship or citizen. And and for me, that really stuck with me in terms of then what I'm thinking about, how how do I embed, how do I provide opportunities and experience? Like if you if you listen to the previous one with um, we went through Justin's, about opportunities and experience for students to develop these and how do I interconnect them with the subjects I teach? And then even for me now thinking further ahead into leadership and the role I'm going into, how do I provide opportunities for my students to develop these skills? Because as far as I'm concerned, when students are applying to go out into the world and get jobs and all these different things. 
they're not going to remember, you know, this particular lesson or subject that was being taught. You know, they're going to talk about the skills that they've learned and how they've applied these, how they've developed them within these fields, within these subjects. And and that's what I think educators and that's what then employers start to look for is skills. And then how do we get experience from that? So for me, it was a really insightful conversation and something I'm going to go back through and look at Michael Fullan's work and would highly recommend, you know, having a look at for you, having a look at skills, having a look at how do I embed these skills? What are they? And using those skills with AI to find out more about deep dive into them and, and find out how you can create opportunities to develop these skills in line with the subjects that you're teaching. That's what I've done a few times and it's been a really worthwhile experience for me practicing uh, and for the students in terms of providing these opportunities to explore in the questions and the conversations we have post that. And that's it for this rewind. If you've enjoyed this one, if you found it again insightful, if you're getting something from it and feeling inspired or something to go look at, smash that like button for me. Uh, hit the subscribe if you are new to it. Um, we have got six more of these to go five or six more of these to go we're going to go out till friday um and that's then the end of term it's travel day um but other than that guys stay safe thank you so much for joining us on this one and i will see you very soon in the next one Ooh.